In this video, I'm gonna share with you how to copy art in a way that is ethical, profitable, and fun as f Let's go. This is The Artist Morning. What's up, beautiful humans? My name is Darius, and if you are new to this channel, welcome. I'm very excited about this video, mostly because I feel the pain at the essence of this video. I know what it's like to be sidelined because I got that voice in my head that's telling me it's too late for you. You should have started sooner. What are you going to contribute to this art form, to this genre? They're way ahead of you. Do you want to be a copycat? I run three businesses all around art, creativity, and self-expression. And those businesses all started with me copying. I've created a framework, a step-by-step -step guide that I continue to do each time I start a new project. And I'm here to share it all with you because if you feel the pain of being sidelined and want to jump in and find yourself and your heart and your art, then this video's got something for you. So let's jump in. Okay, this first step is really easy. Before any of us are masters at our craft or world-class artists, we are always fans. Give yourself permission to like and love artists, genres, art forms, whatever you want to call it. Just fall in love with the joy of it, the enjoyment of it. You know, before you try to figure out all the logistics and all the practicalities and if you're ready and yada, 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 forget all that. Just open your heart fall in love, and that will be our key to what we want to copy first. Step number two, make lists. This one's not complicated. It's stupid simple as well. I love photography. I love all of it. Amazing, amazing, amazing. But how do I know what to copy? I can't copy all of it. I find a specific genre, black and white portrait photography for this guy. And I started making lists on Pinterest boards. Ooh, this one, that one, this one, that one, this one. You could do the same with music, with paintings, with meditations, with TED Talks, whatever it is, start making organized, structured lists that you can go back to. And that's going to take us to the next step. I really love this step. It's a lot of fun. When you have a group of arts or artists that you admire on a list and you can look at them, you can listen to them, you start to see trends amongst them. And you're kind of like the guy in Beautiful Mind where he's trying to figure out that formula to, I have no idea what he was trying to figure out the formula to, but you're trying to figure out creativity as it pertains to you. And so you find these trends amongst the, your favorite artists and you pull them out, their similarities, things that you want to copy when you dive into the craft. So an example of this is when I started portrait photography, I had no clue how that world worked at all. I made a Pinterest board. I didn't look at who the artist was. And then at the end, there's like three or four artists that were the ones I kept picking over and over again. And their style, it was like that hard shadow. You know, the moodiness, the intimacy, the connection was the thing that I fell in love with. And so those are the things I tried to pull out so that I could replicate. Okay, this step is crucial. This step is super easy to mess up, so listen carefully. Now that you've pulled out some themes, some trends amongst your short list of artists, and you've picked what you want to replicate, what you want to copy, here's the thing. 99% of the time, if you tried to do your very best to make a carbon copy of that exact same thing, it's going to look different. Of course, it's going to look different. You're not a master. They've been practicing for decades. And that's not a bad thing that it's different. Just manage your expectations that it's different. Do your best to replicate that thing and try to learn how they did it, how they got there, why yours worked, why yours didn't. And if you discovered something along the way, be open to that as well. Now, here's the thing. 1% of you guys will somehow miraculously be able to almost identically copy that master's work. A couple of things to remember. Do not copy from one particular artist. Copy from a variety of artists. It makes a huge difference. Two, if your thing looks way too similar 
and it's just for you, it doesn't make a difference. You practice, you learn stuff. But if you're going to share with the world, make sure to credit that artist, make sure to give them their due respect. And instead of being a copycat, treat it like an homage respect to that particular artist for what they're doing and lean into the fact that you're copying it and that you were inspired by them. Hi, I'm Little Darius. And I'm here to tell you, if you enjoyed this video and want to hear more videos like it, please hit subscribe or Big Darius won't let me listen to my tunes. I really like my tunes, but we need more Guys, subscribers before the tunes are played for me. And yes, I watch the Cosby show. <laughs> Please hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much. Amazing. You found it. You copied it. You tried. You explored. You grew. You realized copying is actually way harder than you thought. No matter where you got, whether you figured out how to replicate it or not, my rule is I always, at the end of the shot, at the end of the scene, at the end of the segment, at the end of the project, blow shit up. For me, that's bonus territory. When you got what you were there to get, whether it's copying something or client work or whatever it might be, I always leave 10% buffer to just experiment and explore, to do something that we would have never done before. What that gets me is new territory, new space to discover something that maybe I would have never seen otherwise. Start with the copy, start with the assignment, start with the foundation, and then 10% of the time, blow shit up. Have fun, experiment, explore. Remember always if you're doing it with other collaborators, do it consensually. Get everyone's endorsement in that blow shit up part. It could be really fun. I tell people, we got it. Do you want to play? Do you want to experiment? Do you want to do something that we never would have done otherwise? Honestly, most of my biggest breakthroughs happen in that phase of the project. This last step is probably my favorite and also the one that scares me the most. Once you've gone through the previous steps and you've left some room to blow things up and get messy and try things and experiment, in those experimentations, oftentimes you find something new, something you've never seen before. You're like, ooh, I like this. This is something different than what I originally copied. And as you explore, you start to build those things out in a way that only you can. And then you go from starting copying someone else to somehow over the course of these steps, finding your own style, finding your own unique contribution to the craft. Questions that help with this last step are, could I be more courageous with this art, with this creativity, with this expression? Is there an edge I can push a little further? Is there a creative risk I am willing to take? Is there a way to share and show more of me, the real me in the work? Is there a thing that only I can contribute to this piece? Those questions oftentimes help me continue pushing my edge, continue finding my style, continue expressing myself, and help me get from copying to expressing authentically, uniquely, something that only I could do. Before you go, I want to tell you one thing. In case you didn't know, Artist Morning is not just a YouTube channel. It's also a community for kind, creative humans to get space, support, and structure as we meditate, journal, and connect as a community. We meet twice a week, Wednesdays and Fridays. It's entirely free and everyone is welcome. So if you want some support, some community, as you journey on your own creative adventure called life and artistry, come join us. Every Wednesday, every Friday, we'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.